Hello and welcome to the next episode in my Learn With Me Op6 video series. So, so far we've taken some time to look at the basics of the synthesizer, my general first impressions of it, we've listened to some presets, we've listened to the different waveforms available on each of the operators, we've constructed a basic subtractive synth to see something of the flexibility available here, and We've listened to the different modes available that go beyond standard FM. What I hope I conveyed in doing that was to tell you that this is much more flexible than a pure FM synthesizer. This has a lot of scope to grow beyond that. What I'd like to look at today are the modulation sources that are made available to you. Now I'm not going to dig into the mod matrix just yet. So I'm going to be looking at the modulation sources that are available to root kind of on the panel. So let's get to an init patch. Let's pick an algorithm. Oops. Go for five. It's got nice um, pairs of stacked operators. Okay, so very basic sound so far. But what we're going to do is look at how we can modulate this. First thing I'm going to do is try and design the sound which is a little bit more interesting. So that's operator one. Let's have maybe more up here. So this is just three operators outputting at the fundamental. Um, the second harmonic and the fourth harmonic which sounds a bit like an organ but what we're going to do now is change how those come in just to to give us some shape when i'm talking about modulation sources each operator actually has its own amplitude envelope and this is important for fm synthesis but when i refer to modulation sources here i'm really talking about the other set of modulation sources, which are three per voice envelope generators and three per voice LFOs, in addition to everything that you can do with the operators themselves. So I'm going to first shape these three, and I'm going to shape them probably into three kind of plucks, and they're going to be progressively shorter as the frequency gets higher. So let's say the first one has a decay time of three seconds. Second one has a decay time of two seconds. And the third one has a decay time of one second. And then the release time could be, let's say, half a second. And this one had a decay of two seconds. So let's set the release to one second and the first one I set the decay to three seconds so let's set the release to one and a half seconds so already we can hear that we have a slightly more interesting timbre here because this one is sounding longer than the others but let's add a little bit of FM to make some interest now let's pick some different frequencies first I've used one two and four so I'm going to use let's say three five and seven uh, this is kind of arbitrary, I just want to set up a sound to get us started. Okay, so now I'm going to add some shape to these. These are also going to have plucks. And I'm going to make them all quite short. So let's say this one can be half a second. This one can be... 0.3 seconds, actually maybe the other way around, uh, 0.75, this one can be 1 second, and the release I'll set to match, so release is going to be 1 second, release is going to be 0.75 seconds, this is going to be 0.5 seconds, so this is So already, pretty basic FM sound, but we already have something which sounds a bit more interesting here. 
but we haven't even gone into using any of these modulations. So let's, let's have a look at what we have on offer. The first one they call the pitch EG. So the pitch EG has a number of normal routings in the pitch section, but with the mod matrix, you can send it wherever you like. So let's experiment by making this into something very short. Let's say um, a tenth of a second long. And let's make it exponential, so it's going to drop really quickly. So anywhere we apply this, we're going to have a pitch change, but the pitch change is going to be very rapid. So let's look at the pitch section. Um, so we have the ability here to set the pitch EG effect. So you hear that zap I have going on there. I'm interested in what happens if I have an opposing motion. So that was set at two semitone pluck. This one can go for, say this is going to do three semitones. Let's say the next one is going to do four semitones. And then the modulators are going to go in the other direction at half the rate. This is a kind of arbitrary decision that I just made. Uh, so let's see, this is set to 3, so I'm going to set this to minus 1.5. The next one set to 4, and the modulator I'm going to set to minus 2. So you can hear the little pitch motion. Now I've picked a very short envelope shape, but let's say I stretch that out. So now it's much longer because those pitch motions are like four semitones, three semitones, they're quite big. And because they're moving different amounts for the operator and the modulator, we're generating inharmonics. So we're getting some, I would say, quite interesting inharmonic bell tones. Let's move forward. Um, we have a filter envelope, so let's let's shape this. Let's make it relatively long. Filter release. So now let's use the filter. So now you can hear the resonance of the filter driven by the filter EG is giving me that sort of bending tone like the other discordant pitches. But because there's only one filter per voice, the resonance is what we hear. Obviously this pitch motion is a little bit too extreme because I extended it out, but let's just stick with it for now. So what else do we have access to? Well, we have an LFO, which can be key synced to the voice, common or off. So let's go voice. It can fade in. That's not going to work for a plucky sound. We can adjust the speed in kilohertz, or we can turn on sync and then use a musical tempo. So let's leave that off for now, and we can set the phase at which it starts. It says this is used in the, yeah, so it's available in the pitch and it's available in the level. So I'm going to make that a lot faster. This is only applying to one of them so far. So let's go to one. So let's say that comes in at 40 and its counterpart goes the opposite way, so at 20. Next one can go 30, opposite way at 15. Next one can go 20, 
was it y10. So this means that as the operator is getting louder, the modulator is getting quieter. So let's adjust the speed. Already quite interesting, I like that sort of pulsating. In a sense it would be nice if there was a different LFO to use on some of the operators and not on others, and when we get to the mod matrix we'll be able to look at that. Similarly we have an LFO that applies to the filter. So let's do something similar. Does it go? So here we go. Interesting here as well, we have this thing called control. What that means is where there is a parameter set, the controller means that the parameter specified here will adjust how much it happens. So we could say that it's affected by velocity. So you hear, press the key lightly, press the key heavy, or I can make it adjusted by aftertouch. This is not an aftertouch keyboard, but an external one or mod wheel. And yeah, I quite like how that's working. It's maybe a little extreme. So now let's adjust the frequency. It's a bit high at the moment. Okay, pretty interesting. We have, I think, now used all of them. So this sound that we have, though it's a little bit overboard, is utilizing both of those envelopes and both of those LFOs. You may note that I said there are three. There are indeed three, but the third envelope generator and the third LFO are only usable in the mod matrix, which I've not introduced yet. So the video is relatively short. Maybe I'll experiment refining this sound a little bit. Maybe I'll adjust envelope shapes. So let's look at operator one. What happens if you make that quite a lot longer? Let's go. And let's make three longer as well. And then we can correspondingly make these envelopes longer. So the filter envelope. So this means that the LFO adjusting the operators in the ways that I have it adjusting is only going to be happening after a period of time. So let's turn this pitch modulation down a bit. Unfortunately I'm going to have to go through all the operators and do this manually, but it's a little bit over the top at the moment. Let's try and make this a little more musical. Already sounds a bit better. Um, another option that we have in the envelope section is adjusting velocity sensitivity. So let's try and adjust the
So what I've done is I've made the higher frequency ones more velocity sensitive and the lower frequency ones less velocity sensitive. As well throw some effects in. Um, So I think in practice you wouldn't actually have this um, pitch modulation happening across all of these. But I think it illustrates that using these envelopes, using them even though they're common across the operators, can provide interesting tombal variation. Consider for example that we can have the envelopes apply positively or negatively. We can have the, op the LFOs apply different polarities and different amounts across the operators. So it gives us some degree of flexibility. And I think you will agree that even though the sound is maybe not the most useful or practical sound, it does illustrate that even without the mod matrix, even without experimenting with the different operator modes, we can get to some fairly unusual timbres. Consider, for example, that we haven't used different waveforms, we haven't used any of the feedback, we haven't adjusted the width. So those are other parameters we already have available to us. So I made the attack very long. So even this quite strange sound that I've made, put a little attack, put a little effects, and you already have something that's quite usable as a pad. So hopefully this illustrates that there is a lot that can be achieved with a little. In the next episodes, I'm going to dig into this further, but I hope at least so far you've got a feel for how the synthesizer works. You have an impression of the kind of scope of the sound design that's available and the power that's kind of behind the panel of this synthesizer. I hope you'll join me as I spend more time exploring and learning this synthesizer to try and get the most out of it. But most importantly, thank you very much for watching and goodbye.